So as we will be, we'll be beginning shortly the season of Advent, uh, one thing which is very, very interesting uh, is that during the whole season of Advent, right, there's, there's such a build-up, such a long build-up for the great event of Christmas. And there's, uh, you know, there's like that. There are Christmas trees, Christmas decorations, Christmas shopping, on, lots of online shopping now, ordering in stuff from China four months ago. And all, like, just, you know, all the preparations for this great day, right? And it's, it, like, the, the, especially amongst kids. Oh, the, the toy show, obviously. The toy show last night kind of kicks off this kind of Christmas spirit thing. And then you can feel the tension build in kids, so much so that by the 20th of December, like, Christmas, you know? And, like, there's this it's a massive build-up of, of, uh, and, and anticipation. Uh, and then... Christmas Day comes, you know what I mean, and these kind of somewhat exhausted, somewhat exhausted, uh, somewhat bursting with energy kids come downstairs and they're opening up boxes, you know what I mean, and, and, and the fun and the joy and the, then the playing with the box and, and uh, for, for the rest of the day and, um, and then the, the smell of Brussels sprouts in the house and, and then the, the puddings and the tarts and the Christmas cakes that we've been feeding, apparently you call it feeding even though it means pouring alcohol on. Uh, feeding the cake for the last two months, you know, bottles of brandy and all sorts of illegal substances. Um, so, all that, and then, like, it, then it eventually comes. Christmas eventually comes. Boom, here we are. And it's beautiful, it's great. But then one could argue, you know, what's the point in all this build up? Why not just kind of keep it all low key until the 24th and then, then, then let's, let's just have Christmas? The build up, like, the build up is all part of it. It's just this sense of anticipation, like, is what makes Christmas, well, what makes Christmas so great is Jesus Christ, just so that's very, very clear, okay? What makes Christmas great is not presents, and it's most definitely not Santa. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's Jesus Christ. That's what Christmas is about. So that, let, that, let that be clear first. But the whole build-up is what makes this, as a, even as a cultural experience, so kind of, so enthralling, so, so important to us. The whole, the anticipation. Okay, in our reading today, we're reading from the book of the Apocalypse. It's the last chapter of the book of the Apocalypse, chapter 22. And it's, it's got this sense, this spirit, right, of Maranatha. So Maranatha is this, this plea, this desire in the hearts of the faithful that the Lord Jesus would come. And sometimes it can happen today as well, like that there are you know, different prophecies or seers or things that would be expecting uh, different uh, major events to happen in world history, you know, to purify the church and renew the church. And some might say, oh, look, it hasn't happened yet. It's all made up. It's all rubbish. Uh, I, I can't help but think, though, that it's actually really, really helpful to live in a spirit of Maranatha. And to live in the spirit like the Lord could come tomorrow. And then it, that's not, that won't disappoint me if the Lord doesn't come tomorrow. Why? Because I'm ready if he comes tomorrow. Because one day I'll be right. Not that necessarily the Lord is going to come back and we're all going to see him uh, gloriously in some way, which could well happen in our lifetime. But one day I will die, and one day I will see him face to face. So this living in the spirit of Maranatha means that I'm ready. I'm, ready every, I'm living every day as if it's my last. So if this was my last day, would I spend it watching a box set of The Crown? Probably not. So then don't do it today. If, you know, if this is my last day, do something useful and do it every day. If this is my last day, um, I'd probably go to confession. Well, then go to confession. You know, if this is my last day, I'd probably pray more. Well, then pray more. You know what I mean? If you live every day as if it's your last, if you live every day as if the Lord is coming tomorrow, I think it, it actually increases the joy of our lives as opposed to the opposite. We don't live in a constant spirit of, of disappointment that the Lord hasn't come. We live in a constant spirit of preparedness which I think is, is an amazing way to live. So in the same way that, that the preparation for Christmas is what makes Christmas, part of what makes Christmas so special, again, the central point of Christmas is Jesus Christ, the rest isn't, the rest is all just tinsel. Um, uh, but if I live my life with this spirit of preparation, the spirit of, of preparedness, the spirit of anticipation, I will not be disappointed because it's eventually going to happen. I will event, that's one thing we're absolutely, we can be absolutely sure of, I will eventually see the Lord face to face. That's going to happen. So ultimately, I will not be disappointed. Unless, of course, I'm not ready. Well, then that wouldn't, that wouldn't be disappointment. That would be outright. What would the word be? 
disappointment. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we, 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 we should live in the spirit of preparedness. And that's you know, the, the call of our psalm today. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. The Lord comes in various ways and in various degrees. Now that it will be possible to celebrate Mass or to have more faith at Mass, we get to experience the coming of the Lord in every single Holy Eucharist. In every single Mass, the Lord comes to us. So I don't have to wait for a great worldwide apocalyptic day for the Lord to come. I can receive him at Mass. And then if it's not possible to go to Mass, we have Eucharistic Adoration where the Lord has already come and he's waiting. Not only is, 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 has he come, but he's actually waiting for me. He's waiting for my heart. He's waiting for my presence, for me to be present to him who is already present to me. The Lord comes to us in, in the words of another. He comes to us in his word. So the Lord comes to us in, in, in many, many ways. If we live in the spirit of Maranatha, we will not be disappointed, ever. In our reading, we hear about the throne of God and the Lamb. Now, for us Irish, I think most of us, when we think of this, well, hope, I think we, okay, I think of Knock. Uh, that's what comes to mind immediately. You've got this, the altar, the Lamb, the angels around it. It's actually, it's, it's, I've never really heard it said or, or, or described too much, but the connection between, so Our Lady, St. Joseph, St. John, the Lamb and the altar, it's all very apocalyptic, as in it's, it's, it's very, like, from the book of, of Revelation. The, the glory of the Lamb, the Lamb in front of the cross, and then as we hear in the reading, the, like, life, the waters of life flowing from the altar. I think in, in Nock we have an untapped resource and treasure, which I think one day will be discovered. I think we will, here in Ireland, see the, the, the life-giving water flow from the Lamb to, in part anyway, renew our church here. And so when we live in a spirit of Maranatha, like, we're at peace. There's this, there is an, a kind of an excitement to meet the Lord. There is a, maybe a kind of an impatience. But that's far better than, uh, sure, I suppose today I have to, and today I have to, and then I suppose I'll sit around and scratch myself, and then, I don't know. Do you know, I mean, if that's it, my goodness, is like, is that all we have to live for, you know? Whereas living in the spirit of Maranatha, everything, everything takes on meaning. You know, every job I do, I'm doing it for love of the Lord. Every disappointment I offer to the Lord. Every grace that I've been given through, through people or the, 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 the physical things that the Lord has given me, the material ways that he's taken care of me, the spiritual needs, everything makes me grateful. So we just live in this grace wonderland. You know, it's just, uh, I live constantly in the presence of the Lord. The reading from today is from the end of the book of the Apocalypse, but I'd just like to read and finish with how the Bible ends. I'm not sure, it's a good, good quiz question, but do you know what the last words of the Bible are? The last words of the book of Revelation. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all the saints. Amen.